Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listen to discretion is advised. And with me as always, wherever side he's been placed, is Liam Dunn. Oh, it's that time of the week again. No, it's that it's time of the week time. again. It's the Supla. No. Well, yes. Well, yes. It's the other time of the week again. What time of the week is that, Liam? It's riddle time. Oh, fuck this thing. It's Wait, riddle time. Sam, it's... Sam, no, Sam's riddle count is fixed. It, no, I... I can't be on 25 or whatever it was. It doesn't make sense. That's... That, no. You can't go from 1 to 20 in, like, one go. That's not how numbers work. We've been doing this for four months. Well, I've only just know is. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're that's, on about. That's... That, I mean, that's not a riddle in its own right. Do not add to the stupid count, please. <laughs> Look, I don't know what you're on about, right? As far as I'm aware, you're at... You should be at 24 and 0, but for some Why? reason Sam the Ducks have won. 24 riddles! It's been on for four months! Or whatever, three months. That's that's a lot of riddles! And don't forget, you've lost like two or three per but show. Like 24 and 1. You lost three! Is... You lost three last week! Yeah, but the way it's set up is wrong, because the one on the left should be like the... the um. The winning number, and then the one on the right should be the losing number. So if anything, I've got 24 wins and three losses. No. Well, no. Sam's been doing it wrong. Switch it around. Either okay. way, we're ready we for edited? a riddle. But before we go into a riddle, I've got a little plug to do, and so is Andy because it's a super related thing. March the 1st, not March, that was last month, May, that also begins with an M, May the 1st, uh, 2016, at 9pm Greenwich Mean Time, we will be doing a live Supla, we call it Supla Back, ready for payback, uh, which will be starting three hours from our uh, start time, we'll be going on for two hours, if you were there for Supla Mania, which was our Wrestlemania uh, show, our live show, You'll know that it's a two-hour show. We do the news. We chill. We play some games. We play some wrestling-related stuff. So I I think it's a lot of fun. If you missed the WrestleMania one, it's always on our YouTube channel. Go back and check it out. But we will be live on May 1st, May 1st, uh, at 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time to 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. That means there's an hour gap before the pre-show starts. Um... So that's like 4 p.m. if you're in like Florida. Um, I think that's like one. uh, Five hours behind us. Yeah, and then I think it's like 1 o'clock p.m. if you're in L.A. And then just figure it out. There's so many time zones. You're just going to have to do the work yourself. I can't sit here and go through every fucking time zone. Okay? What what about about mountain time? What? What? There's a, there's a mountain time. It's like I don't give a movie. shit. They're mountains. Mountains aren't going to be watching the show. Well, people live in, like, not in the mountains, but where there are mountains. They can figure it out, maths. <laughs> Simple. Look, anyway, you've got your own riddles to sort out now. <laughs> you've got your own problems to figure out. I don't like these problems. Well, <laughs> riddles. look, you've got two. This could be a three. <laughs> I doubt it. I highly doubt that very much. Well, okay, listen. Anyway, so... It's time for the weekly riddle challenge. Da 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 riddles. That's not the intro. Oh. Andy, are you ready? No. Okay. Do I have to write shit down for this one or Probably. 
<clears throat> How long is it? It's not very long. <laughs> okay. But now, listen to this one. Because right. your problem with the last one is you didn't listen. So I listen. Did listen. I wrote it down as well. Well, listen. Right. Listen. Okay. Andrew is stranded on an island covered in forest. Okay. One day, when the wind is blowing from the west, lightning strikes the west end of the island and sets fire to the forest. Okay. The forest is very violent, burning everything in its path, and without intervention, the fire will burn the whole island, killing Andrew in the process. Right. There are cliffs around the island, so he cannot jump off. How can Andrew survive the fire? By the way, there are no buckets or any other means to put out the fire. So, it's in the west? Yep. Um, we can't go that way, because if he goes into the fire, that's not a good idea. Uh, um, why doesn't he just go under the ground? Nope. Okay, um, so you're telling he... me that there's a raging fire, but he has the time to <laughs> dig a hole. Like fucking dig with his hands. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, with his hands! He's not even got a spade! Alright, alright, so... Um, fucking hell, how, just, how can you, you just dig? You're not all that big! Just go, right you just, right, you just go where the fire's already been. So then you keep moving, like, moving with, with not with the fire, but like behind. Because eventually it'll get to one side of the place to the other. No. No, I'm not going to buy that. Why? I'm not buying that. Why? That's, that's because the Because the whole fire is taking up the whole of the west side. So, so how I'm are you going to get behind diagram, it? Right? This I get you thinking, yes, but how are you going to get through the fire? Okay. North, south, east, west. Yes. Right? He's right? just doing, so he's just doing goes, the fucking if directions if now. If it goes... Where the fuck is that? If it goes that way, then the guy needs to be. I need to be there and just keep following the fire until the guy. How are you going to then... get behind the fire to follow oh, the no. fire? I don't know. <laughs> I give up with this one. I don't know. Wait, say it again. Wait, no. There is no fire because it's a storm. It's fucking raining. Look, right. Water puts out fire! It's yes, not but not little droplets! It has to be like a downpour! No one said anything about rain! No one said anything about rain! Well, where does put that out thunder and lightning and rain? That's how it works! It can't happen without rain! <laughs> Do you know anything? Yes. <sighs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Look, rain and lightning is not like salt and pepper. They can, they can be separated. So how, how would you get away? I don't know. Right, do you want me to tell you? Yeah, I give up. Okay, Andrew, this one actually, I'm not going to call them Andrew because you'd be dead. You would be <laughs> fucking dead, sir. You would be burnt. Right, I'm changing his name, Alex. Right, Alex picks up a piece of wood because he's the smarter one. He picks up a piece of wood and lights it from the fire on the west of the island. He then carries it to near the east end of the island and starts a new fire. However, the wind coming from the west will cause that fire to be burnt out and then he can shelter in the burnt area. Oh, that wouldn't work. That's just stupid. <laughs> that oh, and your idea work. of digging is that's, much that's better. That's fucking stupid. He's <laughs> fucked. He's dead. Like... Yes, let me use fire with fire. That's a good idea. It's fucking stupid. No, because he uses it on the east. You're trying to say Just that you'll follow the fire, the right? No, what? no. Your argument, right? I know this is a wrestling show, but fuck it. Your argument is that you wanted to follow the fire as it sweeps across the island. The island, yeah? Yeah. But you can't get behind the fire because it's fucking fire. So if you burn just the east end of it, the wind will knock it out, not to mention that there's not a lot of it anyway, that part will be safe. No, no it won't because the fucking fire is heading towards him. No, because, oh my god, okay. Oh no, oh, is it heading away from him? The fire that he starts would be going away from him, hence it's, the wind uh, uh, is coming from the west 
and it's going east. I see that now, yeah. Oh my god, you just you'll be. You know what? Someone would fucking arrive at that island and they see a char grilled fucking skeleton halfway into the ground. <laughs> what did he do? Wait, he I'm thought he could fucking right? dig. He thinks he's a rabbit. <laughs> I see a fire. Yeah, brilliant. Right, right. move on. <laughs> Wait, can we just give up once it gets to 30? <laughs> like, just, like, just say, this is a lost cause. He can't do riddles. He can do everything else in life, just not riddles. For some reason. Like, <laughs> you fucking do. dig! I can't get over your dig! Oh, That's amazing! Do. do you not have any survival skills? I'll no, dig a hole! I'm fucked! <laughs> I just look at it and go, well, I'm dead then. And then, and then like, I'll just be charred. <laughs> well, barbecue. if it helps, Alex probably wouldn't survive much longer. The fire would kill all the the uh, animals, and all the food would be gone. Well, so you might as well just try and dig a fucking hole then. <laughs> <laughs> that riddle really is stupid. Take that fucking point off. No, that no, that point, that point is staying. That point is staying. That riddle was stupid. No, just because you're getting them wrong. Another. Just it's because you're getting riddle. them wrong. He's dead one way or another. Doesn't make any difference if he gets charred or he's got nothing to eat. He might as well just jump off the fucking cliff and go in the sea. Just because you're getting them wrong, you can't be throwing a little bitch fit. I'm not throwing a bitch fit. Right. I thought we were here to talk about news. Speaking of bitch fits. Well, well, technically speaking of bitch fits, oh, if I can say that correctly. Oh, we're not talking about Conor McGregor yet. Oh, okay. No, we're, we've got to talk about comments. Oh, I forgot about that. We've got to talk about comments on the last episode. Yes. Of course, on the last episode, we spoke about TNA being evicted from their offices. Oh, yes, I remember this. Just thing. generally not having a great time at the moment. Um, looking like the company's on its last legs. Uh, a number of people got into touch, left comments, and decided to give us their opinions. But we have to give a special shout out to one specific person if you've if you've been following the comments of that sp particular episode i'm sure you know who i'm talking about a gentleman by the name of andre corbeil Corb well, i'm sorry if i've i've mispronounced that um he left a couple of comments on the show not very positive comments um kind of not just being derogatory to myself and andy but <clears throat> calling us uh, armchair quarterbacks, which I wasn't sure what that meant. Um, so I had to Google it, which is apparently a term for people who have opinions and comments on something that they have no idea about, which is the real world. I'm sorry. You can't expect every movie critic to have made a movie. It's the world, right? That's how it works. You're putting on a product. I don't like it. I'm going to critique it. It doesn't matter if I know how the wrestling industry works or not. I know how a TV show's put together and TNA's not doing very well. That's all I'm saying. I've got a small business that I've started up. It's not that big, I'll be honest. But even I can tell, if you're being evicted from your offices, you're not exactly on a, a, a good standing financially. So I won't really say it's an qu armchair quarterback. I'd say it's just obvious. And anyway. it's, the, it's just common, common sense. And stuff well, like stuff yes, it's already out there. That's readily available. So. Anyway, I'll, I'll I'll mention some of the stuff that he said. I'm not going to go through all of it. He left quite a few, so I'll only go through a couple of them. Um, one of them that he said was for the guy without the earphones. I think that's me. I'm not 100 percent sure because we both had it earphone earphones and headphones on. Yeah. So I, I don't think know... he means I wear these giant ass things. Like yeah, I... I think I think that's what he means. So I think this is aimed at me. Who right. are you to say that no one will, will watch the Saturday airing? You professional armchair quarterbacks and use me. So that's that's where the professional armchair quarterback came from. And yes, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people will watch it. But statistically speaking, uh, from a rating standpoint, again, I'm British. I guess you can throw that against me. I don't know American viewing patterns. But... Traditionally, Saturday morning is saved for children's television. Uh, again, I don't know, with the advent of digital and Netflix and 24-hour kids shows, I don't know if that's still the case. But when I always knew it, it was for kids. Saturday morning was for kids. Um, I don't think TNA would 
fit into that criteria. It's not a kid's show. It's an adult show, but it's being shown at a time where I don't think adults would really watch it. Um, and no, yeah, not only that, like, there's a difference between being on in the morning and being on in prime time. Yes. You'd rather be on exactly. in prime time than <clears throat> 10 o'clock in the morning. So TNA is a two-hour show, so that means it would go from 11 to about 1, which is lunchtime, midday. Wow, okay. Lunchtime on a Saturday, I can't imagine being peak viewing time. No. I just can't see lives. that. I'm sorry. I cannot see that being peak viewing time. And this isn't being an armchair quarterback. This is someone who is a TV viewer, who is a wrestling viewer. Saturdays are my day off. I'm going to go out. I'm not going to sit in indoors all day. So and maybe I'm just talking from my perspective, from my demographic. Yeah, I'm sure out of the whole fucking country of America, which is about 60 million people plus, right? I'm sure someone is going to sit and watch it. I think you're taking my words a bit too literal there, my friend. But anyway, regardless, um, he then went on to post another one. Dude on the left with the big earphones. I'm the one on the left. So I can't be the guy who doesn't have earphones. And then the one with the big earphones. Um, dude on the left with the big earphones. Stop you mean me. right? Yeah, on the right. And I, this is the one that we actually oh. replied to. He said, dude on the left with big earphones, stop reading the Wrestling Observer and guess a life. Okay, I, can I address this, please? Go on. And then I'll mention our, our replies, but go on. There are two things wrong with what that gentleman said. First of all, I'm on the right. You know how you can tell your left from your right? I'll demonstrate that for you, yeah? If you get your hand and you do an L, that means left. You do it that way, that means right. So, good job on that one. Um, second of all... I just felt like that needed pointing out because you obviously don't. Well, know. it's it's it. The problem is, is when he gets something so obvious wrong, it right. it devalues your entire opinion completely. Yeah, it, it, completely. I, mean, I, know I don't that mean I can't to be riddles, but I still know left from right, though. Yeah, so. I don't mean to be offensive to this man. Gen despite him being offensive to us, I don't mean to be offensive, but. You've got to get your facts right, even if it is left and right. Just not knowing that. Or yeah. mistaking that, you, you, I don't know. I don't understand how you can get that wrong. The thing is, that kind of leads me on to my second point. Like, I read as much information as I can because I need to be completely aware of every fact so that what I'm saying is not total bullshit mm. and wrong and incorrect. Because that's called being a good journalist. And that's called being decent at what you do. Um, so, as a guy who is like, supposedly works for TNA or... Oh, I was going to mention that, but thank you, Andy. And people within the industry and is a writer and a journalist, you would probably know that, right? Right? Mm. So, I will continue to do what I'm doing because that's what makes a good journalist. Yes. Not hard, is uh, it? What doesn't make a good journalist is when you, like, what he did, which is kind of attackers for... No reason. We admit we're not in the industry. We admit we have no connections to anyone in the industry. We're fans. We're doing this from a, a fan perspective, right? That's what we are. If you work for TNA, Andre, great. Good for you. You have connections. That doesn't mean anything to us because we're not about that. We are giving opinions as fans, there's thousands of us on the U on the YouTubes and the internet in general, right. right? So I don't know why we were specifically insulting God. you. I have no problem with this guy. I'm not going to make fun of his content. Whatever he produces, good for him. You know, well done. He's got people. He's interviewed people like Mick Foley, uh, Bill Apter, who knows of us. He's interviewed Matt Hardy, uh, fucking Kenny Omega. He's interviewed quite a lot of people. Good for him. Um, but if you're the official TNA wrestling reporter, if you are a reporter for Vince Russo, like he claims on his YouTube, fair enough. But we aren't that. We're fans. And we were relaying facts. TNA is being evicted from their office. That's a fact. That is a genuine, undisputable fact. What we then did was offer 
opinions. Yes. That's what a podcast is. Yeah, I think, I think he's not really getting that. And, uh, and the thing is as well, it's like, if you're going to attack and have a go at every single person that hates TNA, you are going to be doing this till you are no longer on this planet. Yeah. Uh, you'll be doing this for eternity. Mm-hmm. If you are the kind of person that gets upset by people giving their opinions, tough. It's a free country, um, and I don't like TNA. The fact, that, no, the fact of the matter is, is you can't put something out there and then get offended when someone doesn't like it. I yeah, worked... that, that was kind of my point. Well, this is the thing, right? I know we joke about it on the show, and we've joked about it for about two years. Yes, I did work on Age of Ultron. I did. Um, but people say it's the weakest Avengers film. Fair enough. That's their opinion. That's their right. I can't go around and say, oh, you're wrong. I worked on this. You know, it, people are entitled to their opinion. Yeah. It's a product. Just like everything else. You can have you can have a review on McDonald's, on Burger King, on, I don't know, a fucking wardrobe you got from Ikea. It's a product. You're yeah. consuming, you're buying, you're investing. You have the right to say what you want. That's what we do. We're wrestling fans. We watch products, right? That sentence doesn't make sense. We watch the products. Right. And we relay facts. TNA's being evicted. They're on their last legs. That's a fact. Yes, they could be saved, but they could not be. And that's the angle we went with our opinions. They might not be saved. Because right now, honestly, from a fan perspective, it's not looking good. Yeah, I'm not... I mean, I'm no, like... I, I don't claim to have any knowledge of like assets, liabilities and stuff. But even I know that if you are getting evicted from your own office, which pre- previously was a basement, and you're moving into a warehouse, I'm not a genius, but I think that's not exactly the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. And that's, that's on no prior knowledge of how business works or anything else. It's just common sense. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially... I'm not, you know, I am not going to insult Andre. I'm not going to insult his content, who he works for, although I will because it's TNA, um, and Vince Russo. I think Vince Russo is fair game at this point. Um, but the problem is, is you can't, you can't act this way because we're relaying facts and then giving opinions. That doesn't make yeah. us armchair quarterbacks. It makes us wrestling fans. As yeah. people who watch wrestling, and we do this show. Yes, it's not a very big show. We've never claimed to be a big show. But what we do is something that we find fun. We just do a one-hour show a week where we just critique shit. We report the news, then we comment on it, speculate for the future. That's how a podcast of this fucking dynamic works. Yeah. Anyway, and and and, and I, I don't want to waste any more time. No. Um, so that's all I have to say. But if you want to check out some of his interviews, he's left comments on the latest episode of the show. Go on to that episode. Go to it. Check out his stuff if you so wish. There you go. Did a little plug for him as well. Yeah, How see, nice is we're that? We're nice people. How nice is that? Yeah. You insult us and then we turn around and go, check out his stuff. Yeah. So there you go. You know, do what you want. Um. One last one, because we've been on this for a while, so I'll only do one last one. Heartbreak Kid 101, Andy's biggest fan. You know, these ah, two have a... she returns. They, these two have a little little friendship going on. Yeah, uh, we're BFFs. She, she replied saying... Uh, she left a comment saying, what would you guys do if you were in charge of TNA? To Can which, we before we say anything, Death oh. Battle fan replied to her, before obviously we did the show, he then he put... That depends on what point in time they were in charge. If it's now, then the best decision is just to throw in the lifeboats and save whatever you can. And, yeah. Um, if it's... The thing is, I'm going to take it from the point that we have, right? Now, the only thing that I'm a bit confused about this is that are we going to be the investors or are we already in charge of TNA looking for investors? Because... Let's say sake of argument, we have money and we've just invested in this company. 
Okay, so we've invested. So we are the Harris brothers, essentially. I don't uh, want to be compared to them. Please don't compare me to the oh, Harris brothers. Just because they might be Nazis. Uh, let's just say <clears throat> we are done Quan Incorporated and we've just bought TNA. I love how you still put me in the front. All right. Mm. Um, so we've just acquired TNA. So what would what would be the first thing you do, Andy? <laughs> Fire Josh Matthews. <laughs> Priorities. I like it. I so don't know. That would be the first thing. If we're all in a meeting, Dixie Carter's there, and she's like, so guys, what ideas do you have? You're fired. Go away. Yes. Dixie would... Well, no. She w- She's still got control. Fine. Just stay at home. We'll pay you to say. Just stay away for a while. The first thing would be to just fucking downsize dramatically, right? I don't know if you can get your old spot in Universal Studios back, but fucking base yourself. Because this touring shit is not working. It's not. It's not working. They don't even tour anymore. Well, that's what I mean, right? So they need a base. Remember when TNA just first started? Um, It was based in Universal. Excluding the Nashville days, it was based in Universal Studios. And that worked because it helped grow the company. Very similar to what WCW did. It based itself in Disney. And then it grew and grew and grew to the point where it had enough momentum to tour. TNA doesn't have that. It needs to base itself. So it needs to go back to, I don't know, the fucking Asylum, if that's still a thing, or Universal Studios. It needs to base itself. I think it's a very tough world because nxt's kind of got the indie feel about it so how do you differentiate it it's tough because lucha underground is also very different so i don't know for me i've always said that what i would try and do is i would try and do kind of like a mix between pro wrestling and mma right gone would be the ludicrous storylines of trying to kill Mickey James by pushing her onto a train, right? Gone would be all that sort of stuff. These invasions with Global Force Gold now. I don't know. This might be a scam. Um, it is a scam. Right? Get rid of all that. You just need... You need to follow, in my opinion, the UFC MMA style, right? Not Well, not completely... So you're but, basically copying all of the ideas I came up with? No. What? I, I because did I've said this for order. years, so you copied me. No, I I did this originally. In no, I've said this for years. You're just trying to pass it off as mine. Um, you know, it needs... the. You can just do, like, an interview or a fake press conference or something. It needs to be scaled down massively it needs you know you've got wwe which is the ludicrous storylines you've got lucha underground which is kind of like a soap opera what you can be is you can be that mishmash of mma but pro wrestling so you can keep your company's called total non-stop action yes it needs to be like no fucking promos like no in-ring promos no i wouldn't allow it no in-ring promos. I don't give a shit. You want to get yourself over? Do it on a YouTube channel. Do it on a, a, a f- Facebook. I don't care. Do you it do, like, through post-fight interviews with like yeah, Drew right. Galloway, the like... only in-ring promo should be when someone like uh, I don't know. Let's just say Josh Matthews for this time being. As soon as the match is over, he gets into the ring, right? He needs to physically be there, right? None of this shit of recording it in Nashville. He needs to be physically there, right? He needs to get into the ring and he just needs to go, so, Bobby Lashley, you just beat um, Crazy Steve, because that's a fucking great name, by the way. You've just beat Crazy Steve. Um, How are you feeling? Well, Josh, I I feel great. I, I, I hope this means that I'll be noticed for the world title. I, I might be the champion at this point. I don't even know with the fucking tapings. Uh-huh. I don't know anymore, right? I hope this means that, like, my goal is to be the world champion. And I just want to give a shout-out to Crystal. I love you, girl. Like, something like that. Right? Maybe not quite to that extent. That's a bit sad. 
But yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. You know what I would do? Go on. TNA would no longer be called TNA. Actually, that's a great idea. Rebrand I, completely. Right. Here's the thing. Those three fucking individual letters are a f- fucking joke, right? They're toxic. You go, They're TNA, not even a joke. People it's go, toxic. that joke company, right? Just get rid of it. Start again. Call it something else. World Impact Wrestling. I don't know. Impact Championship. No, that, that ICW exists. Uh, Impact Wrestling. No, that still that exists. Well, look, the Start name's not important at the moment. Yeah. Well, come up with a name, right? For now, we'll just call it World Impact Wrestling, just for sake of argument, right? Leave it at that. Don't fucking have TNA anywhere, because TNA as a brand is toxic. Bollocks. TNA yeah, as crap. a brand is toxic now. People won't touch it. It's a joke. It's like you said, it's a complete joke. People do not take the brand seriously, and that's one of its main issues. It's lost all credibility. So you know what? Fucking kill TNA, right? Everything with TNA gone. Gone, right? Make a new company and go from there. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter what you do. Like, try and make it more like an MMA product. As long as it has TNA in it. Nope, not it's never gonna it's never gonna It succeed. will never be able to redeem itself. As soon as it's TNA, it's just shit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point. It, you can put on genuinely the best show with the best characters, but it's a joke. And they don't even do that. When I have to watch Maria Canellis Bennett climb a ladder to retrieve a contract to then somehow magically become in charge of the knockouts division, because why? Why would she want to? Because story, I guess, right? Wait, 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 wait. What? In an era where Ronda Rousey changed women's MMA, mm-hmm. where WWE are actually taking women seriously, mm-hmm. why do you need a woman to be in charge of the women's division that's called the knockouts division? It's not just that. It's not just that. It's that it's a fucking contract on a ladder. And they want, they're fighting to control. It doesn't make sense. It's a whole division. It's a, whoa. Whoa. Like Shane McMahon and Undertaker, I kind of understood. Even though now it was pointless because no, Shane's no, been in charge Jesus, regardless. That was a waste of everybody's time. That was a waste, right? And we'll get to that at some point. I don't know if we have enough time for this episode. But we'll get to that at some point. Because Shane being like, I'm going to win and take over Raw. And then he loses, but he still gets given Raw. Yeah, anyway, I, I don't think they put any thought into like finishing <sighs> that. So the match was pointless. The match, pointless. Right? WrestleMania, pointless. No, yeah, but that match specifically, that match, pointless. Anyway, that's not what I'm arguing. I just don't understand why a bunch of women want to be in a ladder match to climb a ladder and get a contract to be in charge of a division because. That doesn't even make sense. Like, doesn't that mean Marie can just be like, I'm going to book myself for every title match from this point on. And then when I win the title, I'll book myself to never be in a match. Oh, but you can't make me compete because I'm the head of the division. I get to say what happens here. Why? That doesn't... It doesn't make sense. This is what I mean. TNA, wrestling has plot holes. It will always have plot holes. Yeah. It's like every other form of entertainment. It will. But and when your plot is, holes are so big, yeah. so big, that you just... There's more plot holes in it than Batman v Superman. And like, they're, they're saying something. Yeah, I... I don't want to talk about it anymore. No. Anyway, we're here for a very specific reason, so we may as well actually speak about it. We've been talking about this for a while. So we may as well go on to the actual bit of news that we're here for. Well, since we're kind of waiting for the impending doom of TNA, um, or, you know, people buying it, and we still don't know what's going on. Yes, um, and by the time the show actually might come out, we might know the fate. So this show could be out of date already. 
Yeah, so we would rather talk about something that actually everyone on the planet seems to be talking about right now. Conor McGregor. Liam, have you heard of that man? Of course I've heard of Conor McGregor. It was my Irish accent. Why are you doing that? I'm half Irish. And so are you, Gazin. I am partly Irish, but that doesn't excuse you. What has Conor McGregor done, Liam? Conor McGregor has announced his retirement, apparently. Hello, well, what the fuck? So, no. apparently, okay, Conor McGregor on. wrote a tweet saying that he was uh, retiring young and that he thanked everyone for cheese, uh, which I don't think it actually means, like, brie. Was this cheese. you? This wasn't me, no. Uh, and he said he would catch everyone later. Um, so, everyone was like, uh, hello, well, he's been hacked. And then Dana White, the president of the UFC, uh, announced that, oh, hey, Conor McGregor is off the UFC 200 card. And the whole world is fucking freaking out. And no one quite understands what the shit is going on until now. Um, there's probably a lot more to it, but let's, let's, let's give out what we know. What we do know is that Dana White appeared um, on television and actually said that this whole thing is not about money. That... Uh, Connor wanted to have all the kind of promotional appearances for UFC 200, which, by the way, is in July, moved to May, which would make more fucking sense. Um, but they can't because kind of things are in motion and people are flying over to Las Vegas now, so you can't really do that. Um, question, Liam. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the biggest UFC event in July... Why would you have your press conference in the middle of April? Yeah, that doesn't make sense because, I mean, I guess it's a very different world to pro wrestling. And because it's a wrestling related show, I'm trying to keep it related to wrestling in case anyone who doesn't know MMA or UFC, there are people that are wrestling fans and don't watch this, myself really included. I um, watch both. But. It's, can you imagine WWE doing something like this? It doesn't really make sense. And I know we shouldn't compare, but I just don't get why you'd have your press conference, um, what, three months before it actually yeah. happens? And the thing is, the only thing is, is the tickets go on sale next week. But it's like, it's UFC 200. It so it's is a 200th major miles... pay-per-view. Yeah, it's a milestone event. Mm -hmm. I think that thing would sell itself just on being 200 alone. And on top of that, um, Liam, mm -hmm. have you heard of a place called New York? Um, I, I think so. I'm not entirely okay. sure. Was that where, Hang on. Was that where 7-Eleven happened? According to Donald Trump, yes. <laughs> and um, <laughs> don't elect him, by the way. Oh, God. He doesn't America. even know when the worst thing to happen in your country actually happened. Well, no, he, he thinks, might... No, he thinks he no, was in a fucking on. convenience store. Yeah, exactly. It's tough to work in a convenience store. He's just paying tribute. Those no, workers he's... in 7-Eleven, man, they work long hours in, like, really crap conditions. Like, uh, he's, he's speaking to the 7-Eleven employees. That's a big number. Anyway, um, so, yeah... <laughs> New York now has MMA and it's legal. Mm -hmm. When this event was penciled in, MMA was not legal in New York. Mm -hmm. When UFC 100 happened, MMA was not legal in New York. In my opinion, the first event they do in Madison Square Garden, which is penciled in for November, mm -hmm. will be bigger than this show. So who gives a shit if he doesn't want to turn up to the press conference? Who cares? He's in Iceland, which means he's training for his fight. He's trying for his fight in Iceland. Don't know why. He just fancies Iceland. And he's there, right? And he's mm -hmm. training for his fight. So it's not like he's there on holiday just doing fuck all. Well, he's hang on. Training. If he's if he's retiring, why is he still training for a fight? This is this is the thing that it doesn't make any sense. What I think it is, and what it actually is, is that they've obviously had a fucking argument. Dane is gone. Connor, come to Las Vegas this week. We need to promote the fight. Conor gone, no, I'm, I'm training in, Las, uh, in Iceland. I can't make it. Why are we doing this press conference in April when my fight's in July? Well, we got to do it now because tickets go on sale. Even though you've done more for this company to promote this company, take fights on short notice and go up weight classes. 
and you've made us millions, literally billions. Um, can you just fly out here and get here? No, I'm in fucking Iceland. How many more times do you want me to say I'm in fucking Iceland? So the issue as well is that um, over the past couple of weeks, there was an MMA fighter. Uh, Cavalio, I think his second name was, and he fought in Dublin against Conor McGregor's, uh, one of his training partners, Mm -hmm. and McGregor was in the corner of this Irish fighter, and unfortunately, the Portuguese fighter died. Yes, I've heard this. Later. And in Ireland... It's a shitstorm. It's a media shitstorm. People like ban the fucking sport. People like this is horrendous. How can they allow this to happen? Unfortunately, here's the thing. Freak fucking injuries and freak accidents happen. Formula One, Art and Senna died. Just recently in football, Luke Shaw broke his fucking leg. These things happen, right? Well, let's not forget. Let's not forget two years ago. I think it was Anderson Silva broke his leg by delivering a kick. Freak accidents happen. This is life. This is sport. This is how things are. Things will go wrong. Things go wrong in people's workplaces where they get hurt. Things go wrong when you're in your own fucking home. It, it, anything can happen, right? Freak accidents happen. It's a part of life. Deal with it, right? Yes. Like Batista. Islands, Islands regulatory commission and referees probably need to be a bit better. Fine. But, like, stop it. Um, <laughs> Andy's fun. passing words. Just, but just, but the thing it. is, Conor McGregor put out a tweet saying that he was just like shocked by this whole thing, and he was like, he's just like, I mean, I can imagine that would fuck with you, because if you're sat in the corner going, yeah, punch him in the face, and the guy then dies because of the injuries, you think, fuck me, I'm an awful human being. Mm. Why the fuck am I doing this shit? And the thing is, I can understand from his perspective then. Why would you want to go out, go to a fight, and, well, not go out to fight, but, like, go promote a fight where you're going to, yeah, I'm going to rearrange that fucking face. I'm going to fucking, yeah, yeah, you have a fucking inbred from Stockton, yeah? Like, why would you, why would you want to do all that kind of thing when you've just found out that somebody just died? Like, you wouldn't. And I just, I, for everything that Conor McGregor has done for the UFC and the amount of money and the gates and the pay-per-view buys, and everything else, you think they'll let him off. No! They just pull him from the fucking pay-per-view! Well, isn't he the champion? This is the thing that doesn't make any sense. He's not fighting for the belt. He's going, like, up two classes again. So, <laughs> it's like... What the fuck are you doing? Like, I Conor McGregor wanted to be a champion in two weight classes. That was his goal. He wanted to just have as many belts as possible. Mm-hmm. And... UFC allowed him to do this because Conor McGregor is a bigger draw right now than Ronda Rousey is. Because let's face facts, Ronda Rousey like got annihilated, and Conor McGregor, you know, he fought an opponent. Short notice, whatever. So the point is, Conor is one of the biggest stars in the company, and you've just pulled him from one of your biggest cards of all time just because he's actually training for his fight. The point where now he's gone, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. I retired. Fuck this shit. And I think the retirement thing is not actually real. I think it's almost him going, fine, fuck you, I've retired then. In in a bid to, like, I don't know, gain some kind of leverage over the UFC or something. I mean, I don't know. This is a weird situation where you've just pissed off your biggest star. What the fuck are you doing? I, from from I, a pro wrestling perspective, Liam, what do you think? Um, well, it's, you don't piss off. Like I don't know. It's it's. I think they're kind of both in the wrong, because yes, they're um, they shouldn't be doing a a press conference in April for an event that happens in three months. <laughs> That's just weird, right? Yeah. There's no point, um, because you want to. I don't get it. Like, wouldn't this make more sense the month before? Yeah. And, I mean, because, like, if you do it too early, you do realise that UFC do, like, a card nearly every week. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like, yes, this is you, this is the 200th pay-per-view. 
I guarantee it, this is not their 200th event. This is probably like their 400th or something. Yeah. So it's like, it's not even that special. And then on top of that, like, I don't understand what the big deal is about doing a press... They've already done a press conference. They yeah, did one Yeah. No. I, all I, of the fights. Hang on, I agree. No, I agree. Um, because it's, it's stupid. Um... The other thing is, is exactly what you said. McGregor might be having a change of heart in the industry because of what happened in Dublin. Maybe he is thinking that... I mean, I don't know. Maybe just the other day he had some sort of epiphany and he's been thinking about it and talking about it. But then again, it can be uh, that he's just pissed off at Dana White and the UFC. And this is the problem. This is kind of... It's a, the thing is, this is a symbiotic relationship, right? Is that Conor McGregor is a big draw for UFC, so they can't afford to piss him off, but he can't afford to piss UFC off because UFC is the ones who made him, and they'll be like, well, fine, fuck you, we'll just get someone else to be a new draw. But that's that's not that's not how that works. Like... This isn't like pro wrestling where, uh, I mean... No, but... No, 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 no. You're you're not listening to what I'm saying, right? Right. If McGregor goes, a position opens up, right? Whether it's pro wrestling or not, there's going to be that position that's opened up for someone to fill. There is no one like Conor McGregor, and there will never be someone like Conor McGregor. No, 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 no. You're not even... No, right? I'm not saying that there needs to be a second Conor McGregor. I'm saying that there'll be another star... It's inevitable. It's the way the business works. No, I, I would Conor argue McGregor that Conor... is not the biggest UFC fighter in the history of ever. Don't forget there was Chuck Liddell before him. Yeah, and but would you things... Tito Toy? Uh, I can't even say Ortiz. Tito Ortiz was bef- was be- after Liddell. There are stars. They come, they go. If McGregor but... goes, someone else will will rise up. Yeah, but no one has the kind of... It, no, 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 no. No one has that ability Stop. that he does. Take your head out of his ass, right? It doesn't matter about Conor McGregor and what he can or can't do. The fact of the matter is, they will need a new big star. No, they will need a new big star. Someone will rise to that. It doesn't matter if there's not anyone like Conor McGregor. That doesn't you'll matter. Never... No, you're never because gonna find even John Jones t- no, can't no. even compare right, to this listen, guy. Listen, listen. You're doing a typical smart of there'll be no no one like The Rock. Yes, there won't be anyone like The Rock. But you don't think that they'll just not ever have a big star again? It's taken them this long to replace people like BJ Penn and GSP and all that. It's yeah. taken them this long. No, you don't understand how it works. <laughs> It's... The they thing will is, the force thing is, is someone to be a star. Fight... They will push somebody. Andy, it's simple marketing. You need a face for the company. You need that top star in any sport. In football, you need that top team. Who is it? I don't know. Liverpool? Manchester United? There's Chelsea always that United. top team. The thing is, as well, is that a lot of the fighters are like, Yay, yeah, he's gone. Fuck him. What? That's like the worst thing ever because it's like without Conor McGregor being there, you don't have the eyes on the product. Like, Conor is a draw. So if he goes away, no one is watching you, right? So no one's going to become a star only in the MMA bubble. Conor McGregor is the biggest fucking thing on this fucking planet. He's he's bigger than <sighs> okay, anything. Right. There's okay. been no other MMA star that okay. can do that, okay. ever. So... Even Chuck Liddell was in, like, the MMA bubble. Okay. Anderson Silva, okay. Okay. MMA okay. bubble, okay. GSP, okay. MMA okay. bubble, John Listen. Jones, MMA right. bubble. Listen. Besides some Rousey, and that's it. So you're saying that... Ch- no, not Chuck Liddell. Um, Conor McGregor yes. is basically the guy who is keeping UFC alive. Not alive, but he's, he's, he's basically pushed the so... UFC... Above how, and beyond where the hell they were before. How did Names the company... Names like McGregor and Rousey have. Because how? they've hit mainstream... Don't the, interrupt. The BBC Stop interrupting. reporting on this shit. Stop interrupting. How did UFC 
go from UFC 1 to UFC 200. Because I'm pretty sure McGregor wasn't there for the first one. I'm fairly positive. But then again, uh, yeah, but no, there was Dana White on the rest of them at UFC 1 because they were owned by... Things change. Things grow, expand or shrink. They will do what they need to survive. Life in UFC can continue without Conor McGregor. And I'm pretty sure Conor McGregor can survive without the UFC. You, I mean, if you, if you believe the amount of money that he's made, he says he's made seven figures, so... Well, good for him. He'll be happy forever. But the thing is, it's like... Conor is the biggest draw ever, and you've just annoyed him, and he's gone, maybe. I don't know if he's actually gone. This could be total bull. He's just maybe having a hissy fit, going, fuck you, I'm retiring. Well, all I'm saying is, is I think you need to take your head out of his ass. This right? card is fucked as well, though. Just like, I mean, I don't know that many people give a wank about Jose Aldo and Frankie Edgar. I really don't think that many people care. Well, and... you know what? It could be a chance for them to shine. Don't forget, right? If we're going to take this back to wrestling terms, which this show is a wrestling show, when The Rock and Stone Cold both retired, it was the same sort of idea. And then people like John Cena, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, they came up. Yes, it wasn't overnight, but nothing's overnight. Rome wasn't built in a night. It was built in a day. No, it wasn't. Oh, that's, the, that's the saying, isn't it? <laughs> Things <laughs> change. Businesses change. Right. They have to adapt. You're saying that if Conor McGregor has retired and is never coming back to the UFC, that the UFC might as well just declare bankruptcy at this mo- at this no, very no, moment. No, 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 that's not what I said. I mean, it will never get to that point of being that kind of... Um, like no, you don't BBC, know that. Like BBC are reporting on this. Like don't know that. Connor don't transcends... Know that. You don't know that. You don't know that. You can't say that because you don't know, Right. You could I'm have, going on how whilst was Chuck before. Liddell was around, yeah. you'd probably have thought, oh, well, they'll never legalise MMA, uh, MMA in New York. Well, it happened. Things can happen. Just because Chuck, uh, I keep saying Chuck Liddell, just because Conor McGregor isn't at the forefront doesn't mean it will never happen now. You know, people thought that Hulk Hogan was going to be as far as anyone could go in the pro wrestling business. And then The Rock came along and knocked that out of the park. I'm just saying that why would you irritate? No. This is what I was saying, though. It's a symbiotic relationship. UFC needs Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor needs UFC. But they can survive without each other. Ultimately, UFC can say, well... Fine, Connor. Whatever. We'll keep going without you. And their mind probably will be someone else who then takes the spot in UFC because one of the spotlights is vacant and they will step into it. It's the way it works. They will. It's a business, right? And I know that MMA and UFC is like, it builds itself about being real. I get that. But the, the end of the day... They still need to market a particular person. But the it... issue is, is that I don't think... Yeah, but Conor McGregor marketed himself. Like, he basically, with the gift of the gab, just went on and on and on and on and on. And he, he got, like, the stuff that he wanted. Fine. Okay. He He's the rock. He's the rock. But guess what? WWE didn't close its doors when the rock left. Yes, they lost a lot of viewers, I'm but not... they changed. They evolved as a company. I'm not suggesting like UFC would be like TNA and that'd be it. Like, no, I'm not suggesting that. But you're losing someone who. Anyway, we should you... wrap this up. Yeah, well, who put you in like mainstream level news and stuff, and outside of the MMA bubble. Unfortunately, you get you lose him, you might forever be stuck in this MMA bubble. Hey. I disagree. I think you're just being a bit of a neg- negative Nancy. But I'm not being a negative Nancy. Well, you are. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. We've gone way over. We've gone way uh, over. Uh, well, 
See, that was that was nice. We didn't have to talk about wrestling for once. Well, we still did. That big TNA uh, rant. But, you know, we got over it. <laughs> okay. Um, don't forget also to check us out on the 1st of May for Supla Back. We'll be live at 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time to 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, just in time to have a quick break before the pre show starts. So visit the Supla.com for the broadcast and for free downloads of this show. Visit WrestlePundit.com for the latest news, rumors, in wrestling. Find us on iTunes, search your name, and you'll find us on. Uh, you'll find us there, and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We have the same name, the Supla, everywhere else. And if I have completely fucked this up, everything will be in the description for you below because I can clearly read. I have been Andy Quad. I have been Liam Dunn. And Conor McGregor, please don't go. Da, 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 da. I forgot to record my my video. <laughs> I forgot to record my whole video. <laughs> so I have no video. I, I have no video. I'm fucking broken. I'm sorry, Sam. <laughs> Audio in the shows don't do as well. Damn it. We're talking about Conor McGregor. We'll need to figure out how to make this show more visually interesting.